What's going on YouTube? Mike here with iHeart Knives, and in this video, I'm going to do a quick sort of show and tell, not unboxing. This is just going to be like a quick overview on these stones, the purpose of them, how I found them, and the use that they're going to be for me. So, what I have here is a Chosera 400 and a Chosera 2000, and these are three by two cutoffs, and Basically, you have an 8-inch Chosera stone. They cut off 6 inches for Edge Pro stones. 2 inches are left over. And they have, they have basically no purpose. You can use them as like Nagara. Uh, you can, I guess, sharpen with them. But my purpose is going to be for axe sharpening. I feel like axe sharpening is a little bit antiquated in the way of products that you can use. So like with knife sharpening, you have tons of different systems, tons of different stones. Axes, you basically have silicon carbide um, or like aluminum oxide. And that's really it. I mean, you can use the same things that you use for knives like Arkansas stones. And um, I guess you can use like Japanese water stones. So for instance, with axes, they make landscape pucks. Uh, and then there's like offshoots of, of pucks. And a puck is, it looks like a hockey puck basically. It's just like, you know, a round stone. And you move in like a circular motion across the bevel of the axe. And eventually you end up with a sharp blade. I decided to take the Japanese water stone approach to my axe. And uh, I have a sharpening video that I'll be putting out. But I just wanted to share with you guys this kind of cool revelation that I've uh, come across and I, I think it's kind of cool. I'm going to get the Chosera effect that I get with knives of awesome sharpening and um, you know they're hard so you won't, you won't get like real bad digs in the stones. Um, they'll last a long time. They're fast cutters so you're not going to be there for a long period of time. Like the Lansky puck, uh, it took me probably three times longer than what the Chosera can do. Uh, in terms of speed of cut. I also will include the uh, flattening and beveling that I did in the sharpening video. And I just did like a basic chamfering on the corners like I do on normal sharpening stones. I did I did take the, the very corner off. I like rounded it over. Let's see if I can show you. So this little corner right here, I just like took it right right down. Uh, so there's no sharp line and the camera is going to show it it's not going to look very flat but that's just the wide angle lens but this is flat right now it's going to look like uh, it's kind of like rounded on the top but it's just the distortion of the lens I was thinking about taking the stone and having the middle be the highest point and then like rounding it over so that it would kind of, you know, go down a little bit from the middle, but I decided not to just because that's wasting the material of the stone. And uh, eventually, after a bunch of sharpenings, the middle is going to dish out, and it would end up being flat again. But over a long period of time, obviously, I figured it would just be easier to use it as I use it, and then lap it when I need to. Um, but there's so much surface area on the stone that. Like I can just use a little piece of a corner if I want to, you know, if I want to abrade the axe bevel uh, with just that little piece, which I, I ended up doing. I ended up using lots of different parts of the stone, not just the middle. Actually, I ended up using the corners and the ends more than the middle, which ended up working out well because then you're not dishing out the stone, you're working around, and then the middle ends up being high. And then when you want to, you know, hit the meat, you can just you can easily hit with with the middle part of the stone um, so I just I feel like axe sharpening uh, doesn't get like the same love and attention as knife sharpening does in a, in the way of products and maybe it's just not there's not as much of a market for it I don't really know but hopefully this will bring some light to axe sharpening and um, maybe that that will inspire some some guys to make some different products. You'll see in the next video, I'll show, um, I'll show the sharpening and 
and I got a pretty good edge off of the Cold Steel Trail Boss. Uh, Cold Steel, for the money, the axe that they make is phenomenal. Uh, it's actually a hickory handle. The grain orientation is pretty decent. For like a $30, $35 axe, it's pretty incredible. Uh, but that's neither here nor there. We're talking about Chaucera stones. But uh, for basically $15 to $20, you can get these stones. The lower grits are cheaper. The higher grits are more expensive. I think I paid $15 for the $400 and $18 for the $2,000. Um, obviously, like the 10000 or like the 5000 you know, you're going to pay, um, you know, probably like somewhere between 35 and 50 for those. Like the 3000 is probably the most popular. You're probably going to pay like 35 or 40 for that one. Uh, it always sells out really quick too. But the, the 2000 I thought would be like perfect. And then I go to, um, to Strops. So it ended up working out well for me. And I wanted to feel, you know, the the grit of the 2000 Chaucer. I, I know that the 3000 gets so much love, but the 2000, I feel like, is a forgotten stone. And I kind of wanted to compare it to the Shapton Pro 2000, which the Chaucer has a much, much nicer feel. It has, like, this softness to it and this cushioning that you don't get with the Shapton Pro. The Shapton Pro feels harder. And the Chosera feels more forgiving, sort of. They both feel creamy, but the Chosera feels creamier. The slurry that, that you pick up with it is a creamier slurry. And I'd say that the Chosera 2000 is finer than the Shapton Pro 2000, just based on you know my use with it. Yeah, so this is just a, a quick uh, overview. I didn't do an unboxing. I probably should have. The guy that I got them from... You can get them on eBay. Um, the guy that I got them from, he packaged the hell out of them. He put cardboard around each of them, bubble wrapped them, put them inside of a, a box, wrapped the box up, and then put it inside of like a USPS uh, mailing envelope. So there was like no chance of them getting cracked or broken. He did a phenomenal job packaging these things up. And uh, yeah, if you, if you want to know exactly who I got them from, shoot me an email, um, and I will, uh, I'll give you his name, I'm not going to put it in the video, just because I don't, I don't know how he feels about it, but if you look up Chosera stones on eBay, I'm sure you'll find it very, very quickly, I just wanted to give you guys my, my feedback on these stones, for the limited use that I've had them, but I just think that they're such a cool sort of innovation, it's not really innovation because it's been around for so long, but it's uh, using something that has been around to do something that I haven't seen anyone do before. I haven't seen anyone take these stones and sharpen axes with them. Maybe there are videos out there. I just haven't come across it. I just thought it'd be cool to, you know, hopefully bring a little bit of life into the axe sharpening community just because I, I feel like nobody really talks about it. Nobody talks about sharpening axes with anything else but the Lansky puck um, or just like sandpaper or, you know, like on grinders and stuff. But it's nice to get a Japanese water stone edge on on axe steel. The, the Lansky puck does not a decent job, but these things do a way better job, like not even close comparison. So that's going to do it for this video, guys. Uh, I appreciate you guys coming along for it. Please remember to give a thumbs up, uh, leave a comment down below, hit the subscribe button, and make sure you hit the bell notification to get reminded of when uh, I post videos. If you enjoyed the video, let me know, and uh, I'll see you guys on the next one. Later.